Welcome, racers and fans, to the Racers News Network Live, presented by Straight Line Performance and Automotive and Scotty Wheels Racing. Your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of sportsman drag racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. We are live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup, and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high-performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straightline S-E-R number eight L-I-N-E performance ampersand automotive or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of Racers News Network Live. Uh, we have joining us tonight, our guest is going to be Anthony Bongiovanni. He'll be on with us very shortly. We just got some, we got some results to go over from the, the last race at Atlanta, last national event at Atlanta. Um, unfortunately, the track's getting bulldozed and uh, condos are going up. But uh, as usual, joining me, my man, Pete Sanka. How are you, Pete? Very good, and I'm getting reports that there is an echo. Yes, there is a little bit of an echo going. I'm not 100% sure where it's coming from, but uh, let me turn my volume down a tiny bit. Does that help at all? Uh, I'll let you know if someone's yeah, still complaining. Let me know. Um, so, yeah, like I said, unfortunately, you know, Atlanta Dragway's getting the big bulldoze last national event. Um, we do have all the results. Uh, Scotty is not going to be able to join us this evening. Him and Peter are sharing every other week, I think. Now. Yeah. Us, us part-time announcers over here. There you go, part-timers. <laughs> Slackers. Go to Florida without me. That's right. That's right. Uh, so, Pete, you want to go ahead and kick it off from Atlanta? Yeah, they're still saying Big Echo. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Not sure. Interesting. All right. Well, <clears throat> if you guys coming from Chris, it's coming from you. They're saying coming from me. Yep. All right. No echo you when I do that. Let me do a little digging. Okay. Well, while you're doing your digging, I'm going to do the dot ninety stuff from Atlanta. Um, as Chris mentioned, uh, Atlanta Dragway. Unfortunately, it's the last uh, national event that they're going to have there. Um. And here are the results. Uh, Super Cop, Chuck Trotter, uh, 009 ran dead on with a seven. He defeated Kent Hanley. Uh, Kent had a 34 light and ran dead on with a six. Uh, Chuck got his first national event win. And something that I just found out while talking to Chris, it's the first kept time a door car won Super Cop in 10 years at a national event. Pretty impressive. So congrats to Chuck. For Super Gas, um, a lot of you might not know this guy's name. He's not around very much. Uh, his no, I've never heard of him. Yeah, now, uh, Luke something, what is it, Chris? Bogacki. Oh, Bogacki, yeah, yeah, kind of rings Bugacki. a bell. Luke Bogacki, 12 on the tree, dead five for a little 17 pack. Uh, basically boxed out Jonathan Anderson with his 19 light uh, and went under trying to catch him, ran a 988 with a four. Um, Chris, give me a guess as to how many national event wins Luke Bokaki has. 37. Oh, God, you're way off. He'd love you. That's his 15th national event, Wally. Wow. wow. Probably 37 Wallys if you count divisionals. But that's his 15th national. There you go. 
And the class that's near and dear to me, Super Street, we have Tony Jones getting his first national event Wally. Uh, he did it against Keith Myers, uh, a friend of the show and always a killer in Division One. Tony Jones went 009 on the tree with a breakout uh, 1087 with a three. Myers with a 20 light and went just a little bit quicker, uh, 1086 with a five. And uh, like I said, that was Tony's first national event win. So we have a couple of first timers and a seasoned veteran all taking home the hardware from Atlanta in the dot 90 series. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, all right. Top sportsman Dylan Stott overtook Sandy Wilkins. Uh, Stott with a 661 to uh, Sandy Wilkins 652. Uh Head to stock eliminator Greg Rowe in the Chevy in 1165 defeated Adam Davis in the Chevy Nomad who ran an 1190. Super stock, the man that also run it up in Super Comp. Of course, I'm talking about Ken Hanley in the uh, that amazing little red Chevy Cavalier of his. Uh, 943 to defeat Brett Candies and one of the factory Mustangs uh, who ran a 945. Top alcohol funny card, another New England native. Of course, I'm talking about Matt Gill and his Chevy Camaro who ran a 552 to take out Bob McCosh who ran 554. Top alcohol dragster, division one again, Rich McPhillips Jr. defeated Jackie Frick. Jackie's on a roll this year. I'll tell you, she's got the lead in the divisional points, and I'm pretty sure she's got the, the lead in the yeah, national points, point too. too. Pro Mod, uh, Justin, Justin Bond, Bond over, over Stevie, Stevie Fast, Fast Jackson. Jackson. And, and getting into the pro, pro categories, categories Scotty Polachek in Pro Stock Motorcycle defeated Matt, Matt Smith, who red lit. lit. Pro Stock pro Car, Car, Greg Anderson. Anderson with I believe that's number 96 for him. I'm pretty sure, I think that's number 96. Um, defeated Vincent, Vincent Nobile. Funny car, Bob Tasca III, again, another New England native and the Ford Mustang, took out John Force. Top fuel, Antron Brown defeated Steve Torrance. And that is all your results from Atlanta. Chris, I figured out the feedback issue. Yes. Your voice is feeding back through my mic. When I mute myself, the it echo goes away. goes away. So when you're talking, I'm going to mute and vice versa. Very good. All right. So moving on ever so gently, we have joining us our guest this evening, of course, Division One standout stock, super stock sponsor of not only the division sponsors his names on some cars that aren't his too and uh was actually running in atlanta and then drove his rig up to charlotte to get ready for the four wides there was on a plane this afternoon and uh please welcome anthony bon giovanni to our show hey chris and pete nice to be here thank you very much for taking the time to come on and hang out with us so you and I talked a little bit yesterday. Um, your story of how you got into the sport of drag racing is a little different than most people. Most people who have kids get their kids into it. Right, right. Because they're already doing it. You kind of, your kids kind of turned the tables on you a little bit. They were, they started out. That's, and then you got into it from from your kids. From that, yeah. So my story is a little unconventional compared to how most kids uh, or most people get into the sport. But um, I've always been, you know, interested in cars. I've always loved cars and uh, have for many years. And and when my my kids were young, I actually have two girls, and they were uh, nine and thirteen. My daughter, my youngest daughter, Michelle, was eight at the time, and I actually went to watch a friend of mine race. Never been to a drag race in my life. And it was actually during a national event. This was about 14 years ago down at Raceway Park. So 
we go in and we see the drag racing. And I mean, it was amazing to see the top fuel and the funny cars go. We happened to be walking in just as they were going down the track. And I had never heard anything like that in my life. Anyway, we stayed for the day and, and really enjoyed the drag racing. I had a lot of fun and she just got into it and, and really enjoyed it as well. We were talking to my buddy right afterwards and he could see the excitement on her face. And, and he mentions that his kids ran junior dragsters. We're like, what's a junior dragster? And the next thing you know, he's showing us his kids' cars. And my daughter looks at me and she goes, I'd like to do that, Dad. Which was amazing because the kid would start to cry if he went over the speed limit in the car. It's like, really? You want to drive a race car? So anyway... I ended up building two junior dragsters and, and my kids started racing them in nine and 13. And we did that for about, well, we did that for about 10 years in total, but after about five years, my older daughter started to age out. So, you know, we were having so much fun going all around, you know, the East coast, to uh, junior drag racing. I mean, it was just a great family thing to do. I decided to keep it going and go build a, you know, a big car. So, you know, along the way, one thing happened and another thing happened. I ended up building two cars, one for me, one for her. And uh, after that, it got completely out of hand and we just kept racing. So it, it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it a lot. I like the family aspect associated with it. Um, my younger daughter still races. My older daughter talks about getting into it every once in a while. We'll get back into it. We'll see. But uh, it's great. It's been a lot of fun. Very rewarding. And I think, you know, to me, the best part of it is that I've just met so many wonderful people along the way as we've been racing. So it's really good. Very cool. Uh, Pete, go ahead. Uh, well, I think I figured out our feedback issue. So now I'm going to look like I'm fresh from the 1980s, but I think we're good. Um, I missed out the whole uh, junior dragster thing that started, but Kevin Weber filled me in on that already. So I kind of knew about that. Yeah. Um, tell us what you have in your arsenal. Uh, how many vehicles? What do you have? What classes do you run? I got. I have five cars that I uh, that I race for regularly. I have a. Uh, I race uh, factory super stock. They're all Cobra jets. So I've, and uh, four of them are uh, all uh, supercharged. One of them is uh, naturally uh, aspirated. But uh, I race uh, factory super stock C, as does my daughter. Um, and then I also race factory stock A, and then I have a factory showdown car too, which. Uh, I actually haven't raced that in a, a couple of years. I didn't race it last year during COVID. I only got out a couple of times the year before that. We're looking to get that back on the track sometime this year. That's a tough, that's a competitive class now, though. It, it's amazing. I mean, what, what they're doing, it's a lot of fun to watch. But boy, I don't really feel like building a, rebuilding a motor after every race. <laughs> a lot of people are throwing their hat in the ring in that class, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so you have a lot of big money in that class now, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But it, it's a fantastic class. I mean, it's just it's fun to watch. Awesome. So obviously, you're a Ford guy. I guess that goes without I am saying. A Ford guy. Yep. Yeah. What uh, What got you to Ford? What's your affiliation with them? You know what? I've just I've just always liked Fords. I mean, ever since I was a kid, my my first car was a was a Ford Mustang. You know, it was. And, uh, I just I've always liked the cars. I've always liked the company. You know, there's a, there's a lot of good things about Ford. So I've always been very loyal to the to the brand. I don't have a single Chevy or a GMC in my arsenal, which I hope that doesn't turn off everybody that's not a Ford <laughs> fan. But, but we all have our preferences, right? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Now, uh, this is kind of my segue into you mentioning uh, a famous person that you know. Uh, who do you know specific in the big Ford family? Oh, the, the, the Tasker family, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How did, how did you uh, come across them and how have they helped your program, if any? Well, you know, it's funny. It's, uh, I, I met them probably, and I see, I've been racing for 10 years, so probably about nine years ago, I met them in Charlotte, right? Uh, Carl's uncle Bert came by one day and I had a, you know, most everybody at the actually so Kobe Jets were brand new, right? So there were there was just a couple of about them. Don Fussell was one. I was another. And uh, I know uh, Carl used to match race with a car that he had built in 2010 at that point, too. And um, Bert came by and took a look at my car. I really liked it. Mine's a B&B &B chassis. So um, it didn't start out as a factory car. Um, 
and he liked it. We brought Carl over, and we got, you know, we met at that time, and then we kind of caught up at races. We were racing over just together, you know, a lot of different places, and and became, you know, very friendly. It's a wonderful family, an absolutely wonderful family, and I and I enjoy seeing them when I get out to the racetrack. But nice. uh, you know, the fact that his father was the one that really made that Cobra Jet program happen that's uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I remember watching something about Tasca and. I think, when did he get back in the funny car? Was it last year? Bobby the third. Uh, and he's been in funny car for, I, I want to say, at least three, if not four years at this oh, point. Oh, it has been that long. It's been a little I, while, yeah. I know he was he was in, then he got out for a little while. And then I remember watching an interview with him that basically said he showed up at Ford headquarters and he wasn't leaving until they threw him out or they gave him a deal, one or the other. That's, that's the story I heard, too. And yeah, that's pretty cool. How he puts his mind to something, he generally gets there. He's Good for a him. Good. smart guy and, and you know, knows how to get it done. Pretty impressive this weekend, too, that's for sure. Yeah, well, and that is, am I right in saying that's two in a row for him? Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good for him. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question that I don't know if a lot of people want to know, but I do, so that's really all that's important in my book. Um <laughs> <laughs> you you get a uh, factory shootout car okay now you go to ford you get a car you uh, bring it home now i know you don't just go right to the track and start racing no what, what do you do in other words do you uh do you take the drivetrain completely out have it redone uh do you just get a tuner uh to help tune what what's well, see, my car didn't start out. Interestingly enough, my car did not start out as a factory Cobra jet. Okay. So I built my own factory showdown car, too. Now, I say I built like I did the work. There's not too much on it that I can do. I do the tuning on it. Yeah. Um, but And we do the wiring and things like that. But my chassis builder, the person that built that car was Darren Broad at B&B. Okay. In Walt, Tennessee. Yep. Tom Martino uh, yep. in New Jersey from Martino Race Engines does my does my motors right so um and then we piped and plumbed it and put it all together but it, it's always a project and i like projects they're kind of they're kind of fun to do but you know tuning that car up and getting it to go as fast as you can i'm not i'm not competitive like the guys are you know today i'm not uh, uh i'm not spending them at eleven thousand rpms the nhra has been changing the rules they've been you know making the pulleys bigger to slow down the superchargers they've been just making the engine go faster to pick that back up and make up for it right they're turning on 11,000 RPM. I mean, they're screaming when they go by the finish line. It's amazing. So, wow. um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see where that goes. But it, it's a cool car. The first couple of years we did it, we had some success with it. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, you, you downplay tuning and wiring, but I got to tell you, I've dabbled in fuel injection. I put fuel injection on my car last year. Okay. And I mean, what I have on my car is probably the 16th of what you're doing with yours, but I will tell you that tuning and electrical wiring and stuff is no small task. So well, I'm a computer guy, right? So I there couldn't figure out a carburetor if my life depended on it. <laughs> I had a lot of difficulty figuring out my kids' junior dragsters, right? But how to tune the carburetor. The fuel <laughs> injection was a lot easier to make. So and it, you know it's fun. We have a dyno in the shop, which is great because that saves us so much time. We used oh, yeah. to try to go to the track to tune. You get you go to Raceway Park. You have two cars you want to tune, and you'd be lucky if you got to make one pass at each. You know between the oil down. So right, right. I actually saved a lot of money putting a dyno in my shop because now we just put it on a dyno. We can get we we can get pretty close, right? Once we get out of the track, I have to make maybe one adjustment, and then that car's good to go for the race. Nice, so, nice. Good, good deal. Do you, so with all your cars, obviously you can't drive them all. Uh, who do you have driving for you? You know what? I have a, a number of people that, that drive. I mean, between myself and my daughter, we drive three, and I think I'm going to put her in another stock eliminator car this year. So that'll be four. But you know, in the past, Kenny has driven a lot. Kenny, he always driven a lot for me. Steve Fricacci, Dave Fricacci, um, Evan Smith. You know, actually, Evan ran when we were down in Bradenton. He ran my stocker. I ran the super stocker. Yeah, um, you know, down there at the uh, the NM, uh, NMCA race. So I got a handful of people that I can always count on to, to get in the cars. Right, right, to right. Some fun with me. Well, listen, there's there's always a super street driver waiting in the wings. If you ever need anyone, let me know. <laughs> kind of kind of short, so you might have to move the pedals up. But other than that, I'll make it happen. No problem. No problem. <laughs> hey, um, 
you've also rumor has it that uh you're helping out a guy that um again kind of like luke he's not very well known uh some guy dan yeah dan fletcher i think actually really he's helping me out actually because he gets so much coverage and we do a lot of activation around my company's resource one of micro strategies and um you know we do a lot of marketing associated with that and you know what nobody from a sportsman perspective nobody gets more coverage than dan so it's great yeah. It's great to be able to, to sponsor him. It's a lot of fun, actually, because he goes rounds. He's, he's a good guy. And, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for, for, you know, having somebody to really work with in, in that regard. So Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So in talking to you before we came on, uh, you had mentioned how important the whole family aspect is and, and friends and all that. Uh, care to elaborate on that a little bit for us? Yeah, I mean, to me, that, that's one of the things that attracted me to to the drag racing is, you know, the fact that it's, it's just, you know, regular people, good people, and pretty much everybody that goes to a drag race is family, or is family oriented. It's that kind of sport, you know? Right. And I saw that a lot with my kids. And I'll tell you, my kids, too, when they were drag racing juniors, they had a ball. They, they went to the track. They were there with a bunch of other kids, a bunch of other families. They had the freedom. We would stay at the track. Um, you know, they had a lot of freedom to do that. And then as, um, you know, things grew, we moved into the big cars. One of the things I like is we do a lot of activation and a lot of marketing wrapped around my companies for getting, you know, for, for branding out there. And one of the things I love about that is the, the fact that it's not just my customers that I get to invite, but it's them and their families. And when the kids come, you know, they have a ball. And it, and it leaves lasting impressions, right? They love they love sitter, sitting oh, yeah. in the cars, getting their pictures taken. They love hearing the cars. They love going down the track. I mean, you know, the night at Thrills at Raceway Park, when they used to do that, the suite would be full. The kids would be having a ball. The jet cars would come out. So, yeah. you know, it just, it's just wonderful in, in so many, so many different ways. Right? I, I couldn't think of something else I'd rather be doing. Yeah, yeah, I... I know that um, my kids, now I have five combined between uh, my wife's kids and mine. And uh, all five of them came to watch me once. At Le well, a lot more than once. But the first time they came to watch me uh, was at Lebanon Valley. And the first round I won that they all saw, it was a complete freak out session in the bleachers. <laughs> and right. for probably three years after that, I still had people coming up to me going, I remember when you won that round and and your kids lost their minds and they all went running to go see you. And yeah, there's just, there's really nothing better. Uh, I'm sure other sports have it too, but it's, it's just incredible. Uh, the whole family aspect of the. Absolutely. Of the yeah, absolutely. No, that's wonderful. It really is. It, it, it's good in so many ways. And to me, it's kind of like camping with a hobby, right? It's, yeah, exactly. You throw a little competition in there too along the way. It's, yep. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Chris, what do you got for him? On the, on the bringing the kids to the track thing, um, a few years ago we did, again, you know, it was three years worth of doing it. We brought about 300 and I think it was 372 kids combined over three years to the divisional at New England Dragway. And, you know, these are kids that are at a summer camp program that I worked at that have never been to the racetrack and they absolutely loved it. Right. They yeah. loved the, you know, we bring, we brought two full size buses and two little buses worth of kids every year. And, um, you know, we'd, we'd walk through the pits you know, we go through the gate at New England Dragway, go to the right, walk around the loop road through the grass, you know, and I promoted the, the hell out of it, basically. And, um, you know, people knew we were coming, but it was just amazing to see because it's face effects. At a divisional, typically, you warm the car up, make sure it's got fuel, everything's good to go, shut it off, go have something to eat come back out, get in the car, go make your, you know, your hit and come back again, check the car over. Most people, you know, again, back in their RV, right. but to see the, as we were walking through the pits, just people were like pouring out of their campers and out of their trailers. Cause again, they all knew we were coming, 
you know, yeah. and they would stop. Yeah. They were talking to the kids, you know, taking pictures with them, signing autographs, you know, people throwing hats and T-shirts. And, it, you know, it was like Bedlam, but it was great. And um, hopefully someday we'll be able to get back to that point. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you know, the, the sport, everybody in the sport is so accessible to all the fans, right? It's it's not like a NASCAR race, right? You know, they, they, they come out to the track, they can get up and up close to the cars, they can get into cars in a lot of cases, right? They can meet the drivers, they can see how they, you know, the setups and the operations they have. It's a lot of interesting stuff, and it's, you know, it's, it's great to have a sport where everything is that accessible. Absolutely. Totally. You know, they agree. actually got, they got to spend time in the stands after, you know, walking through the pits, watching the races. And the one thing that I really wanted them to hear was one of the injected nitro dragsters you know making a hit on the line because they were they were i knew they were going to lose their minds right and you know i believe it actually it was the first one they ever saw do it was jackie frick and exactly what happened you know these kids went mental when she stomped on the pedal and it was just it was amazing to so see that was, it that was, that was like when i walked into raceway park the first time with my daughter right we happened to walk in just as uh, one of the top fuel cars was going was going down the track, and I didn't really know anything about it. I couldn't even see the cars, and all of a sudden, I heard this noise that was so loud. The first thing I did is I put my hands over my kids' ears, but it hurt so bad. I swear, I almost took them off and covered my ears. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a thrill for any kid. And I think that that is really what what got my 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 daughter going that day. That's for sure. Now, as far as your business, not only do we see your name on race cars, yours, obviously, and then other people such as Dan Fletcher, we see your name a lot on the sponsor list, especially up here in Division One. Yeah, yeah, we, we do a fair amount of sponsoring. You know, it, it, it's a great branding opportunity to be involved, you know, in that regard. The D1 TV, actually, I think it, that, that we're really happy to be able to do. We we worked with the NHRA um, three years ago to get that going. And I will tell you, the racers absolutely loved that. I mean, I had racers coming up to me thanking me for the you know, first couple of years associated with that, with, with sponsoring that. And Dave Moen did a great job getting that going. But I think one of the nicest things was when a racer came up to me and he goes, I got to thank you for doing this. He goes, my father has come to the track with me for you know 15 years and he just can't do it anymore. Yep. So, he can watch it on D1 TV. And that was that was really nice. So, you know, those sponsorship opportunities are great. I do a lot with the, the junior dragsters too. So I'm sponsoring the program at Maple Grove this year. Um, I believe uh, there's a division, a division 11 on, so I'm sponsoring that as well. You know, and, and it helps to get, you know, I like the junior dragster program because it helps to get new people into the sport. So um, that program still seems to be doing fairly well. So that, that's a hopeful sign for the sport as uh, we start moving into electric cars and other things too, right? And they just announced today, I heard that the NHRA now is now going to include electric cars in each of the classes. Not quite sure how that's going to work. And, and you know, there's no details wrapped around it yet, but they're going to start taking electric cars seriously, uh, you know, in racing. So it'll be interesting. Now, being a Ford man, have you gotten the opportunity to look over the Cobra Jet 1400, the electric car? I, I've seen it, but no, I haven't, you know, I haven't really been able to get very close to it or, or into it, you know, at all. I know uh, Bob Pasca actually drove it, right? There's a Ford video with him yes. driving that thing. So it looks pretty neat, you know, it's... It'll be amazing to see from a technology perspective how that goes. I actually spoke to my crew chief today on the airplane on the way home saying, you know what, maybe we will go do this if this really does start to, to go mainstream. He looked at me, he goes, that'd be great. He goes, I'm sure there's a lot less maintenance. <laughs> this yeah. be good for him, right? <laughs> but well, it's, funny it's, because you know, it's not natural for us because we like the sound and the power and all that stuff. So it's kind of hard to fathom racing an electric car. I mean, it's funny because since we've come on in January, Pete is an automotive instructor at his at his local high school. Um, so we've bounced around, you know, the electric car stuff and the technology, you know, involved in it. And from his perspective, and I'm sure he'll he'll back me up when he when he comments, you know, 
it's another way to bring another group of the future into the, into sport. the sport. Yeah. You know, I because agree. like like Pete, you know, Pete's the carburetor guy becoming the electric, you know, becoming the fuel injection guy. You know, you it's just it's the evolution of stuff. We don't have to like it. It's just it is what it is. The the one thing that I don't understand about drag racers is I, I've I've never seen people with so much resistance to certain things in all my life. Uh, it, it's crazy to me. Um, would I want to go to a racetrack and see all electric cars? Absolutely not. No. But am I excited that there's another group coming to the track and it's possibly opening up another set of doors to bring more people in to grow the sport? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I am blown away by the amount of people that say, as soon as they start running electric cars, I'm never going to another event again. I just, I don't understand that logic. I don't think I ever will. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, kind of typical, right? Yeah. <laughs> what actually happens will probably be a very different thing. I don't, I think it'll be interesting. I think if they make a class for electric cars or multiple classes for electric cars, that'll be good. They come up with, with the, uh, you know, the, that normal engine. So I think that's, I'm not quite sure how that will work. But I do think that in the overall, bringing it in will be good for the sport. I think it adds some new excitement to it too, you know? I think a lot of people are afraid that because the cars are electric, you're going to be able to paint a number on the window and because it's electric and you fully charge the battery, it'll do the same thing every time. And I'm, I'm not buying that for a second. Me uh, I don't think there's any shot in the world of that happening. I don't think the technology is there. Uh, I could be totally wrong. I have no idea, but Ultimately, I would love to see enough electric cars that they could run in their own class. But until they get to that point, I have no problem with them coming. And I'll be the first one on the line to watch them because I think it's cool. I love technology. Well, you know, power management is going to be key, right? Because electric motors make incredible amounts of torque. So how you manage that torque can give you the right. most. And they make it all at the hip. Yeah, it's yeah. all right That's, there. Yeah, so there's no power curve. There's no none of that. It's you give it 100% and it's going to give you 100%. Uh, no, That's why I find that interesting, right? So it's going to be a right. tuning game there, right? How, how are you going to manage all that power? That right, you right. You? And the and other yeah. thing, though, too, is the battery depletes. And, you know, as the battery does deplete, you know, you're not going to get the same amount of power as the voltage tends to drop, even if it's a little bit. I mean, it always amazes me that we, of course, Run within a hundredth of a second, you right. know. Um, well, the, you know they're going to have the same issue, just you know different parameters. But you know, there's, right. there's still got it. At the end of the day, they're still dealing with wind. They're still dealing with traction. I mean, it's right. all you know. I'm sure a lot of our motors will make repeatable horsepower, probably within two or three horsepower on consecutive dyno poles. Right. Right. But there's so much more to it than just the output of the of the motor. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure cooling of the motor too. I'm sure right. the, the temperature of the motor has an effect. There'll be a whole number, the number of different challenges associated. Right. We could we could circulate water through our engines when it's not running. You can't pull the water on them things. So <laughs> right, yeah. you have a fan blowing on them, and <laughs> what else could you do? Doesn't sound like a good idea, sir. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um. Another thing I wanted to talk a little bit about, you you told me about it before we came on. Um, there is a video that involves you and your daughter being flown out to uh, a, a location out west. Right. You want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, that was the Palm Desert. That was fun. Um, so Ford was looking for a Ford fan to showcase, if you will, the track app. So like the launch control and the uh, line lock and all that and you know through some relationships that i had um they actually interviewed her there were a bunch of people they interviewed and she was 17 at the time and they interviewed her and they liked her so they actually came out here they brought they brought uh ken moi who who actually was the the producer for the movie need for speed he came out with his team he had four or five people and they had a truckload of equipment it did a day in the life if you will of michelle it was in the middle of winter time too and it was freezing so um 
they did that. And then I remember saying to him, because now we had to go to the Palm Desert to Chuckwalla track. I think that was the name of it out there. That's either the track or that's a band, one or the other. So <laughs> I can't remember which is which. But anyway, uh, they, they were going they were they had to go out there. And that's when I said to I said to uh, the producer, I said, wow, I said, this is a pretty big production. He goes, this, he goes, this is nothing. He goes, wait till you get out to the uh, to the track in California. In Southern California, where we go out there, and there was there were they, there was eighty to one hundred people, and they had they had chase cars. They they, they, they had these Porsches, and, and actually one was a Mustang too. That were retrofitted with these long arms with cameras on the end, and then they had helicopters. And in the video, a good portion of the scenes were done by this helicopter that was chasing her around the track and for three days. She was sitting there doing burnouts and launching the car and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, it was a ball for her. And as her dad, I mean, that, that was just fun to watch. It was, it was a, a pretty incredible, pretty incredible Very cool. Day. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'm getting a text from Kevin Weber. It says, ask Anthony where he spent his birthday for 10 years. <laughs> I spent, I spent 10 years at Bristol, Tennessee on my birthday every year because that was always the time for the Eastern Conference Finals and my kids used to love that. And, and Kevin would always talk his wife into making a beautiful meal that he would bring out to the track and that's how I celebrated my birthday over there. It was a lot of fun. Very cool. Fun. So what is the, your schedule, your, your race schedule look like for the rest of this year, Anthony? Oh, uh, God, you know, a, I have so many races on the schedule. I can't possibly do all the ones I listed out. But I, the, the next few, actually, I'm going on the 15th. I'm going back to the four wide. Uh, I'm going to do that race. And then I'm going to go down to Atlanta. To uh, There's a double down in Atlanta so I can get a couple more grade points up. Last year, I had seven grade, grade points. I couldn't get into Gainesville this year. It was the first time ever. So, uh, wow. you know, I want to make sure that I, I get eight. And then after that, we go up to the Maple Grove Divisional, um, you know, so we're going to be, you know, doing that as well. But I know, you know, we've got a number of divisions. We've got a double over at New Media Dragway, which is a great place to race. I absolutely love it. That's one of my favorite tracks, you know, around here. And uh, I'll be up at Lebanon. They're having the Divisional up there. So I'm planning on, on being over there. And then, of course, we've got Indy. Um, I'll be out at that one. I will be up at Epping. I'll be up, definitely be up at Epping for the national event and, and hopefully there for the division as well. My daughter lives in Boston, so that's easy. I'll just bring her car up with me and uh, do some racing. And then, you know, a few more. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm just going to be a good year. I didn't race much last year, you know, with COVID and everything. I really wanted to focus on the business. And, uh, you know, that was important to me and my team. Um, but this year, I'm, I'm looking forward to making up for some lost time last year. So, good, good, good. Now, obviously, again, your businesses, you know, are first and foremost on your race car. They're the most prominent. But what other people and other businesses tend to help you out with your with your fleet? You know, I've had a, a couple of other sponsors in the past, one of them being uh, NEC Financial, right? They, they spent some time with us. And then Arrow Electronics, they were, you know, a sponsor for, you know, for a little while. But mostly it's, it's my organization because we find that the branding that we get as a result and the ability to be able to have something new to talk to customers about, you know, it's a great way to really build relationships with people. So, you know, my business is all around you know, providing technology to organizations and help their help them grow their businesses. We do it, you know, in a number of different ways. But, you know, they're long-term relationships that I have with my customers, right? They're not transaction-based. Where we when we get a customer, it's usually for a very, very long time. And it's and it's a great way to interact with them. And as I said before, interact with their families. It's just it's fantastic. Awesome. Cool. Good, good. Well, Anthony, I would like to thank you. Uh, for two things, one for taking the time to come on and uh, two for doing what you do for the sport, because a lot of people know that you do quite a bit. And uh, I guarantee you that a lot of people appreciate uh, how you support the sport that we all love and what you do for for a lot of people. Well, I love it. It's a, like I said, it's a sport. It's filled with a lot of great people. We have we have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, 
you know, I'm very happy to be to be part of it as well. And thanks for inviting me to the show. It's uh, actually fun to talk about drag racing. Usually, I do, uh, you know, Kevin Weber, Kevin Weber is the one who mentioned, uh, suggested you come on. That might be the only good info I've ever gotten out of him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad he mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, do us a favor and knock down a couple of races this year. We'll have you back on. We'll I'll have work you back hard on it. if you don't. But either way, <laughs> well, that'd be fun. That'd be we good. want you to be holding a trophy in your hand when you come out again. Yes, absolutely. I want to do that as well, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Well, I'll make sure I come shake your hand at you know New England or at Lebanon Valley. And uh, again, you know, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy life to come on and hang out with us. My pleasure. Nice chatting with you guys. You Take well. care. Thanks again, Anthony. Have You're a great well. night, Anthony. Bye -bye. Thanks. You All too. right. Bye -bye. Anthony Bon Giovanni, everybody. Very cool. All right. You know, so, it's funny, in all, all the years that we've we've probably been at the track together 200 times and uh, never met him or anything, but what a great guy. Oh, absolutely. All right. I'm going to, I'm trying to find, because I didn't print it out. I do want to say with Kent Hanley though, yep. uh, 171 people congratulated him on our Facebook page. Wow. Very cool. Yep. Um, I don't know how much you want to talk about this ever so briefly, but I would assume Pete. Um, I know you saw it when I posted it or after I posted it, teen hospitalized after shots fired during fight at Mooresville Dragway. When did that happen? Uh, yesterday. Oh God, no, I didn't, I didn't see that. That's terrible. Yep, he didn't, he, he survived. He's gonna have surgery. Um, but uh, a fight at Mooresville Dragway late fr Saturday night ended with a teen shot in the chest according to the Rowan County uh, Sheriff's Office. Actually, I think that's who Jagger Nevis works for. Hmm. Uh, victim does that. We don't need to identify him. Um, Scott's online. He's saying it, it happened during a grudge race. During a grudge race. So that's like the second or third grudge race, grudge race we've heard of so far this year where right. it's either people throwing fists or in this case. Yeah. So that it's you know it, it, again if you're if you're a fan of the sport and you're an advocate of the sport you hate seeing stuff like that because it just you know people when they hear about it on the news they don't hear that it was some unsanctioned grudge race with a bunch of knuckleheads all they hear is it was a drag racer yep. you know so that means that every drag racer from California to New Hampshire all must be just like those guys and that that sucks yeah, it just doesn't do it doesn't do the sport any good no. and it doesn't do the car culture any right. good right like there's where my son works here there's a there's a huge walmart across the street with, and they have a um car show yeah on saturday nights i sat there one night for a half an hour waiting for him to get out of work and i was just watching these meatheads ripping out of there lighting up the tires yeah making yep. like they were drifting you know uh, i don't know it's just, not good yeah not good I, I i think i'm showing my age because it doesn't do the car culture a damn better good right right well it's, you know what you're you're showing your age because you're a little more mature uh, i know when we were kids doing burnouts was cool but at the end of the day we want what's best for like you said racing or car culture and that you know right pulling out in the street and spinning your tires, shooting rocks up and crashing into someone is not good for the whole image. Right. Unfortunately. You know, how, how many times have you seen the videos of some of these knuckleheads ripping out of a car show? Mostly, you know? mostly in Mustangs. It's a good thing. Anthony's gone before I said that. <laughs> so how did your, how did your poll do this week? That is what I'm looking I'm, chasing it right now i know you love talking about your polls i love talking about those polls especially <laughs> since i figured out how to do them and not get me and not get us in trouble not get in trouble right yeah um actually it was uh, very 
large amount of interaction. I was very impressed. It just it's incredibly buried down here, so I just I'm chasing it. Um, what was the question? It was about the four white, correct? Yes. Actually, you know what? I think I printed it out. I don't know what I might have done with it if I print. Oh, here it is. All right. I did print it out. I'm stupid. So a few weeks ago, the four wides in Vegas. The racing was pretty good. Some are fans of the four wides, some are not. One of the great things about it is that it's a change from the norm. Do you believe that a change from the norm is a good thing? We don't explore new options that the sport may not survive or attract new fans. We all won't agree on all the changes, but change is needed to progress. And that can go, kind of go to the electric car thing too. Right. Some tend to think that the fans and racers don't benefit from the four wide format. It's fast paced for the fans and the racers and can be confusing for both. We want to know what you think. Do you like the four, wide, four wides or not? And why you either do or don't. So a very simple, um, just made a few random comments to, for people to vote on. Um, nope, not a fan was number one with 63 votes. I love the four wides, 12 votes. I love it, but I don't think it should count for points. I was added by you, sir, six votes. Uh, change is good and we need more, three votes. I'd rather see four wide bracket racing two votes and dot 94 wides one vote so yeah i mean um, i will i will say one thing i've been a huge fan of the four wide since the first time they ran it just because of the spectacle of it uh, having four cars go down the track all lit. I mean, it's got to be amazing. But the first time I wasn't crazy about it was this year. I was watching the NHRA live feed. And FS or Fox Sports 1, 2, whatever the hell it is. They do a really, really good job of putting up everyone's numbers and reaction times and all that. When you do the live feed on NHRA, you don't get that. And watching the live feed and watching all four of them within a half a car of each other and not knowing who got there first or who went, what did, what happened, it was it was confusing. And I can understand where it would drive some people crazy. So I would have to say if, if I'm really going to enjoy it, it's either going to be on a broadcast where we can instantly get the info or live where you could witness it and, and, you know, anything in between, I, I could understand where it could be a little bit of a drag. No, no pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Right. No, it's, it's on the, I want to see it list. You know, right. I may, right. may like it, may hate it. Yep. Um, we had, you know, what, um, all together. five. 81, 86, 87, about 87 or 88 um, votes, but we had another um, 80, I think it was 86 when I looked last, mm -hmm. um, it kind of followed the trend of the votes, you know, there was a few that loved it, right? a few that thought it was Cool, I saw it. Okay, next, let's move right, on. Right, right. Yep. And but it, the majority were like, no, I'm all set. I I know I said it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about it. Um, I, I still would like to see it as a nine non points race and have it be set up like when they had the Winston non points race at Bristol. I think that would be cool. It's it's different, but. If you don't get the hang of it or it, it throws you for a loop or something, it doesn't cost you anything in the points chase. That's right. yeah, back when they had the the Winston Select. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 All you know, 
They put dragsters well, points, in their points cars don't matter. And was, start or something. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Points don't matter. It's right. all about it's all about the the paycheck at the end. Of right, the right. Have someone put up two hundred grand or something and let them race for the big check. And at the end of the day, if if someone screws up staging or throws you for a loop, it doesn't hurt your chances of a points championship. So right. Yeah, all about the money race. Right, right. So I know that they had when they had the four wides in Vegas this year, yep. uh, which was the first one there because they had done the con- finished up the construction last year. Right. Um, they did a uh, they had a, a meeting for the alcohol cars because this was the first time that they had run four right. wide. They they're doing the same doing thing. Doing it again, right? In Char in Charlotte, yeah. You know, right. you know, kind of a this is how you do it. This is what what this you know procedures are and stuff. Right. So. Yeah, I mean it's got to be confusing as hell. Which which again, if you're if you've been racing the same style for the last thirty years or twenty years or whatever, to all of a sudden throw this in the mix and have it count for points is got to be. Uh, it, it's not fair. I mean, I, I just don't think it's the right way to do it, but. You know, Bruton Smith, uh, yeah, Bruton Smith spends a boatload of money on the sport, and at some point you've got to give him what he wants. If he wants a four wide, give it to him. But I'm sure if we said to him, "Hey, we're going to have this race at your track, and we got you know whoever Camping World to sponsor two hundred thousand to the winner, and this is how we're going to do it, but it's not going to be a points race," I can't imagine it would break his heart. Um, I'm sure he would be off as long as the spectators are there, the TV coverage is there. What does he care if it's points or not? Right. And and have it, and it would be just as badass as it always is. And a lot of people probably won't get their nose nearly as bent out of joint if it wasn't a points race. So, do you think the day will ever come when you'll see the regular sportsman classes doing it? Or you think it's only going to be for the pro? It's only going to be for the pro stuff. Yeah, because the, the it, it's got to be for a heads up class because we judge the finish line. That how could we look over three lanes and try and take the stripe by five foul? I mean, I can't even do it when I only have one car next to me. Never mind <laughs> both sides and looking. You can't. There's no way a dialing class would ever be able to do it unless they took the brake pedal out of everyone's car and just made them all dial on us, that would be the only way that you could do it. But that'll never happen in sportsman racing. Right. But I will tell you that if I ever went to one of these events and they said, you're going to do time trials four wide, I think that would be the cat's ass. I would do it in a heartbeat. I think okay. that'd be great. Next question. I believe the record in top alcohol dragster so far is 509. Okay. I know I kind of posed the question and Scott Hall from Moroso commented on it. Yeah. Do you foresee a time in the not too distant future? I mean, I know top alcohol dragster isn't exactly your bag, right. but um, do you see a time where the, they're knocking on the fours now they're in the, you know, they're in the five teens, the, the low five twenties. Right. Do you see a four second run coming? Coming when? The, this in year the, in the not too distant future i'm going to say in the next two or three years you'll see it but here's the big but if nhra doesn't do anything to slow them down you know if nhra doesn't want them in the force for safety reasons because they're getting too close to the top fuel guys for whatever reason that would be the only thing to stop it because the, these crew chiefs and these cars and technology, there's the only thing that's going to slow them down are rules because uh, they'll, they'll just progress every year. I would like to see an average of like uh, the fastest ET per year for like the last three or four years to see how much they've gained on it. I'm going to say probably definitely not this year. Uh, next year, maybe a slim shot. The year after, there's no question in my mind, someone will be in the force um, in top alcohol dragster if NHRA doesn't throw a wrench in those plans. Because right. I, I posed the question to our top alcohol guru, Scott yep. Hall. Yeah. And he said, not 
until not without the lockup clutch. The way that he said it, I'm simply basing it on my assumption of how I how I read what he said. Right. That you probably won't see the lockup clutch in top al top alcohol dragster anytime soon. Doesn't mean they can't figure out a way around it. Sure. I mean, these people aren't stupid by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Right. Um, but that was his um, take on it. And I. If someone already went 509, I mean, granted, it's got to be mine shaft and traction's got to be unbelievable and all the planets got to align. But if someone already went 509, I can't believe that in the next year or two, without any rules changes, someone can't dip it into the fours. Um, I would almost put money on it. Next thing, did you see Lisa had a comment about you and the Mustangs? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're all just kidding. Please don't get mad. <laughs> yes, we did. No, I'm only teasing you. That, that's, there's just as many stupid people that drive Chevys as there is Fords. I'm not worried about that. And a lot of foreign cars, too. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the drivers. It's not the brand. That's for sure. Very, very ridiculously true. Yep, yep. All I right. think I have a I have a new uh, poll question for you. I think it needs to be on electric cars. Needs to be on the what? Electric cars. All right. Send it to me after. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We got the schedule. There has been some changes in it so i'm gonna to have to print it out again uh still memorial day weekend for division one at maple grove uh division two may 21st through the 22nd at atlanta division three next one is not till july 2nd at uh norwalk Division four, that's so far the closest one at Texas Motorplex, May 13th through the four and 14th. Uh, so that's actually a regional. And let's see, do, 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 do. Division five, Bandemir, June 18th and 19th. Division six, June 11th through the 13th. And division seven, is July 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th in Sonoma. So they have a double. Um, looks like a lot of COVID stuff is starting to really relax. I, today in New Jersey, they loosened up a, a whole lot of stuff. And Florida is pretty much wide open now. But, I mean, we're done, pretty much done with Florida. Yeah, right. Um, until the fall, yeah. Until the fall, yeah. And... Um, yeah, Connecticut loosened up a lot today, and I think on the 19th, uh, all restrictions are gone with the exception of they still want face masks, face masks indoors. Very cool. But uh, no more, uh, believe it or not, bars are allowed to open today that don't serve food for the first time since it shut down. How would you like to be a bar owner in Connecticut? Could you imagine? Don't see Pete for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> so, Matthew, can we wrap this up, please? I got a school waiting for me. <laughs> there you go. Actually, speaking of, of you, sir, um, congratulations are, are in order. There's a uh, promotion in the uh, the high school teacher ranks. Yeah, it, it was it was weird how the whole thing went down. Um, ultimately I wound up in the position I'm in because they gave the position to a guy who transferred in over the summer and he never showed up for work. So they gave him the position and then he retired. Uh, and then we have a, uh, a transfer period and an interview period. Um, I would never make it in a transfer period because whoever has the most seniority gets it and I don't have very much. Um, but and the interview period, it's it's whoever brings it to, you know, whoever brings their best to the interview. And luckily, I got the shot, uh, got my application in. Then the state had a hiring freeze for about five months. 
Uh, and then when they lifted the freeze, I went to the interview and and I won it. And I still can't believe it, but but I got it. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a good thing. Now, are you overseeing the department only, or are you still teaching and overseeing the both. department? I do both. both. So it, it's actually there's only two teachers in automotive, and right. one of them has to be the department head. Uh, the big deal for me is that I was still a durational teacher, meaning the instructor was doing an internship in central office. While he's doing an internship, they have to put someone in the chair. But if central office doesn't hire him or he decides he doesn't want to do it, he comes back and I'm out. I get bounced right out. So for the last two and a half years, even though I was employed, I wasn't locked into a position. So I went from a durational could be bounced out whenever the guy decides he doesn't want to do it anymore to now I hopped right over instructor and went into department head, which is crazy. Uh, so basically I'm in charge of the department. Um, I could decide what grades I want to teach. Uh, when the department has money to spend, I get to, you know, say where the money goes. Um, and then if administration or anyone has an issue with anything in the department, it's all on me. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Looking forward to, uh, to dabble in it a little bit this year and then hit the ground running next school year. I can't wait. Now, obviously you own your own, you own your own business. Correct. You've been teaching for two and a half or so years. Yeah. What made you decide to go from, I mean, you still have the shop. Right. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to become a teacher? So I've always wanted to be a teacher. Um, ever since I was, Christ, in my teens, in early 20s. Um, I always just liked it. If, if I knew something about it and, and people would ask me about something that I knew about, I always liked talking about it and showing and um, being self-employed. I did quite a few internships uh, from local schools, tech schools and high schools at my shop. Uh, and I always enjoyed that. And I'll never forget in 2016, uh, my wife said to me, you know, your shop is going good, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. She goes, why don't you take a class uh, to be a teacher and see if it's something that you like? So the position in the state school, you have to take college courses in order to get your certificate. So she looked up what courses I would need and she signed me up for the first one. And uh, I paid my $1,200 or whatever the hell it was. And here I am at, you know, 45, 46 years old. I'm going to college. Go figure. Uh, and I took the class and I loved it. I loved everything about it. Uh, I loved learning how to teach, uh, you know, the right way instead of the way I thought it should be. Right. And uh, one thing led to another and I took a class and then I took another class and then I got a job and it, here I am. It's crazy. Uh oh, I thought we were going to get out of here safely. Oh, goody. I got That's stuck alive. Off. I apologize, guys. I'm sorry. I, 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 right. was just, I was just getting ready to start breaking Christmas chops, but now I can do it all. The time. <laughs> uh, no, there was a rain delay in Dean's uh, golf tournament, so I got so stuck at the sitting in my truck waiting. Yeah, for no worries, buddy. Family first. You know that. Um, before, before you open fire on him, Scott, hang on just one sec. Um, Matt Viscone said, Pete, that he never thought the day would come when he agrees with you. Now, could could I correct you? Please do. Isn't it, isn't it Matt Viscione? Yes. <laughs> yes, Pete. Maverick you're... Racing. Maverick Racing. That's what you Yeah. That's <laughs> uh, funny. All yeah, right, I know. Scott, open, open fire. Uh, I, I, I want to chime in because I've known about Pete's uh, thing for a couple weeks now before he could announce it. So I'm, uh, I'm proud of him, you know, now, now he'll uh, hopefully get his degree and he, he won't be the, I won't be the only college educated, you know, I, oh, we're two out of three then. Oh, Pete, catch up. Now Pete's got to catch up. No, I, I don't have a degree, but I've been going to college for the last couple of years. So what what do they make you have to that's one do they make you have to I know you said 30 credits, but did, will they make you have to like eventually get your bachelor's or no, no I just once I hit my 30 credits in the categories that they want them in, 
Yep. Uh, so like I, I do a special education course. Uh, I do two department head courses. That's for your employee. Especially. Yeah, or for me, when I get to learn more about myself. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it, and it's a lot of uh, psychology courses and stuff like that. So I won't technically have a degree in everything and anything. It's going to be all those, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. So I'll, well, I'll learn a little bit about the stuff that I need to learn about. But but it's almost like when I left the Navy and went to college, they gave me a certain amount of credits for my experience in the Navy. Right. So it's almost like they're giving you a certain amount just for well, your that's, experience. That's how I was able to get into teaching because um, if you have eight years experience in your field, then they count that as knowledge for right. teaching your field. Right. So. Okay. It's good stuff. I was like, I got, I didn't graduate from high school. I got my GED when I was like 20, 19 or 20. Yep. I went to college when I was 29 and then I got my real high school diploma actually two years ago and i was lucky because they took my high school stuff from you know 100 years ago they took my ged classes they took my college classes and i only ended up having to do two actual high school classes nice. to get a legitimate high school diploma so they were able to go back to the records when your transcripts were like chipped into stone and read yeah. them and apply it. <laughs> They're on the wall in the cave. In the cave on the wall. In the cave, yep. <laughs> Look, just because you guys are both younger than me, which is scary. <laughs> um, I did get some good news, Pete. Pete's got to take a, Pete has to take a ride with me to New Jersey to go pick up my RV. Is it official? It's official. Good for you. Where did yeah. you get the one from? Uh, Navy Federal. Oh, fantastic. Good. So it's, uh, it's exciting. I just... Before I hand him the check, I want somebody to come with me that can just, you know what I mean, just look at it. And... Well, I got news for you, buddy. It's going to be a couple of weeks. It's okay. I got uh, my car's getting painted this coming weekend, and then next weekend's my first race. So good. We'll smoke in a couple of weeks. After that, uh, wide open. I'll take a ride with you anytime. Yeah, I'm excited. So it'll be a good time. Yep. Good for you. Good yep. for you. I'm glad I had a little piece in that and making it happen. Dude, you and called it, out. You called out the price without even knowing. I know how funny is that. And Kevin Weber is actually listening right now. He's oh. the one who hooked us up, so you can thank him. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for listening, Kevin. Fred knew exactly who it was. So that's two things we got good out of Kevin. We got Anthony on guest tonight, and we got uh, Scott a motorhome. Kevin, you're on oh, a roll. Two th that's two things that you've gotten out of the show. Yeah, yeah. Kevin is on a roll. Right here, right here, Scotty. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I got to give a kickback. <laughs> it's actually he only wanted to work on the motorhome. Me and Chris I work on percentages. <laughs> uh, so let's. Oh, what else? Uh, Maverick Racing. Yes. Said that you got to change the name on the Vega to Professor. Yeah, 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 no, definitely not. There's nothing professor about me. I just like teaching kids about automotive. That's it. That is it. Who's our guest for next week, Chris? All right, next, as I have paper airplanes flying across my screen, uh, from the the doofus. Oh, whoa, 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 Chris, you must fell. What are you guys doing? Hey. Whoa, whoa, he fell over. <laughs> Not that wobbly. I am. I'm at least sitting down. I don't have to worry about fall. If I fall out of my chair, I just give up. I, I hear you. All right. So, joining us next Monday night, May 10th, at around seven o'clock. Thank you to Scott. So actually, that's three things. So we'll balance each other's out percentages out. Uh, John Sears, the uh, X275 founder, is going to be on with us, and. Uh, I know Scotty's looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, that's a, that sounds like a Scotty interview to me. Yeah, it's going to be a good interview. It's going to be a lot of hard questions. Nice. Talk. We can put a style race. Dot 90 field in his, in his races. That's awesome. Well, it's Monday night, and then I know Tuesday or Wednesday he'll be a yellow bullet. So. Oh, very nice. Good, good, good. He gives us a little preview on what he has to go through. Yep. Dynamite. Is he gonna bring a? Is he gonna wear a bulletproof vest and a bodyguard? Have a bodyguard? <laughs> he does. Excellent. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, da, 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 da. Chris, have Kevin you reached Weber out? Just said, enjoy. 
Lori Butler is just laughing at all three of us because we're fools. Because we're idiots. Because <laughs> we're idiots. It's like watching a train wreck watching this show, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Chris, can you reach out to John at all? I can try. Well, I can. Do I just give him the information that I use for the Zoom? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Yep. Right. Or if uh, send me his info and I can have I can have the tech the tech person do it. What either, okay. either we'll have the RNN tech department handle it for yeah, us. Yeah, I'll let him know. RNN tech department. Like I said, or, she's over or here. As, throwing, or as we like to say, Tanya. Throwing, <laughs> there she is. She's, there she is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, she oh, underlines my logo perfectly. It's excellent. <laughs> she, both of them driving me crazy today. Aww. Oh, Aww. poor Chris. Oh, it ain't poor easy being Chris. It ain't easy Chris. being green. You know, I've been back to work for one week, working five days a week, and I'm wondering what the hell I got myself into. <laughs> yeah. I've been bitching about it the whole time. Welcome to my life. Oh, yeah. Look at you. We probably you and me probably work the same amount of hours. I work like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wish. I, I, the problem is I work until 10, 11 o'clock at night when people are still messaging me. You work with your brain. So See, I, I don't have I any do, brains. Yeah. So I got to work physically. That's the difference. I do. I work with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Well, a Anthony Bon Giovanni, if you're still listening to this disaster, <laughs> thank you very much for taking the time to come on and hang out with us. Scott, glad you had uh, three and a half minutes of your, of time to join us. And 12. Appreciate it. I'm good. He, he's the so, three and a half minute man. Thanks, buddy. Minute man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at he's actually turning red. I can yeah. see it. Right, listen, I'm just jealous because he's got a minute and a half on me. So oh, he's, oh, he's flush. He's flush now. Three and a half minutes. That's impressive. I'm flush. Yeah. He is. He's flush. Uh, uh, that's funny. Oh, uh, you guys. <laughs> Scott, seriously, though, congratulations on the motorhome. I couldn't be any happier for uh, you. Yeah, that's you. awesome. Can't wait. Good stuff. Oh, hold on. Anthony uh, just yeah, commented. Hey, just said, happy to join. I had fun. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, and uh, oh, trust me, now that I got your, got your contact info, Anthony, we'll have you on back again. Without a doubt. Without I'm just doubt. glad I wasn't on. I didn't know he was a Ford guy. I would have really laid into him, so that's good. Yeah, well, he said he was sorry he he missed out on meeting you, and I told him he wasn't missing much. Yeah, you're not missing much. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no. He probably had a better day not meeting me. <laughs> yeah, we'll well, get I got to leave day. Charlotte, North Carolina late from the airport. I know what that's like. So if you ever fly to Charlotte, North Carolina, there's one thing you can be guaranteed of. You will either sit on the runway for an hour or you will miss your flight because you're sitting on the runway the for an hour. Yeah. Ask me how I know. Good stuff. Christmas Day. What, oh, God. Four years ago? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good times. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Again, Anthony Bon Giovanni, thank you for coming on, hanging out with us. Appreciate it. Um, Pete, thank you, as always. My pleasure. Uh, Thank you for your time. Sorry, to, I'm glad the rain at least interrupted, so you could come on. An exciting and, call. Uh, that means, but you you do have to show up next week because that is your interview. I'll be here all day. I'll be here all night. No, I won't be here all day. <laughs> yeah, me, you me know. and Chris could take the day off, and we'll just make funny in the comments. Just, you know what? You do that so. Little lever right here. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gentlemen, man, have a good night. I have a racing soap opera to go watch. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah, it's soap okay. opera time. <laughs> yeah. Soap opera time. Chris, I'll send All right, you boys. The, uh, I'll send you the poll question tomorrow. Yes, please. All right, buddy. All right, guys, have a great night. We're going to close it out with uh, a little bit of Scotty Wheels racing action. Scotty Wheels Racing is a veteran-owned and operated company that specializes in performance parts, installation, and tuning. They can build and design your chassis right at their shop in Hamden, Connecticut. They offer track and remote tuning for your electronic fuel injection and chassis. They are your one-stop shop, including brakes and suspension, chassis, engine parts, fuel systems, turbos, and accessory. They not only sell it, they race it on their own in-house race car. Be sure to check out their website at www.scottywheels.com or give them a call at 203-500-5995.
All right. Have a great night, everybody. We will be back next Monday evening at 7 p.m. live. Tune in. Check us out. Take a look at our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash Racers News Network. Or if you can't find it, do it that way. Just search Racers News Network on Facebook. Thank you very much. Have a great night, all.